Now I've worked with molten metal before, but that was tin, which melts at a pretty low temperature. Iron, on the other hand, melts beyond 1200 degrees. So while I don't think I'm quite ready for that yet, there is some iron I can work with that's a little bit more approachable. This is iron powder, powderized iron. It's in the name, obviously, self-explanatory. Apparently, when mixed 50-50 with this resin, creates a perfect iron replica. And I'm gonna give that a go today in a number of different ways, but we need to start off how we usually start off with things we haven't tried before, and that's with a dabble. I'm gonna start with a few molds that I have ready to go. This one's just a basic skull, so hopefully I'll end up with something scully. And this, well this was a hand sculpted purity seal that I made over on tabletop time with the originals that I cast out of sort of like a red wax material. I wanna see what this looks like as iron. Now I'm gonna be working with two pretty dangerous substances, iron powder and clear casting and embedding resin. The iron powder is actually iron. It's true iron powder, meaning it's microscopic dust that was originally solid iron. And the resin is clear casting and embedding resin. Now I've never used this before. It's actually from the hardware store. I'm used to art resins, which are usually a part A and B mix, which you mix equal parts with. But this iron resin recipe requires equal parts of the iron powder and the clear casting and embedding resin. And then you need to drop in this resin catalyst hardener. And this is the weirdest part to me. You literally only need 10 drops of this per 30 mils of the resin. It seems like a really minuscule amount. I've never worked with that little amount of accelerating or hardening agent with the resin. It's definitely foreign to me and I'm very curious to see how it goes. All right, we have our cured iron resin pours. Let's just see that it comes out nicely. Ooh, ooh, okay, all right. Now, so far it doesn't look a lot like metal, but it feels like metal, like it's very heavy and rough on the surface. But there's something apparently you can do to make this much more metallic. Enter rust solution. Apparently by brushing this on in layers and allowing it to dry and coming back with a few more layers, apparently adding a mist of water between layers can sort of enhance the effect. This can build up a rust on the surface because it actually is metal all around and through this resin. So the rust solution reacts to it as if it were normal metal, which of course enhances that metallic effect. Even more so when you use a mixture of steel wool and a spoon to burnish back some of the outraised metal areas creating a much more organic, rusted metal look. Now, honestly, I have to say, for a dabble, these turned out absolutely spectacular. Honestly, they, they are heavy as hell and they feel like iron. Like I could totally fool someone with these. And now that we've done a bit of a dabble and know the medium, it's time to start diving. And skulls were pretty metal, so let's make it even more metal. I mean, iron specifically. And what's more metal than Iron Maiden? Now I pick Iron Maiden because there is this image that just comes to mind for me, which I know is sort of this zombie looking character Character, who it turns out has a name, Eddie of Iron Maiden, on a lot of their album covers and merchandise. I thought it'd be pretty metal to sculpt an Eddie to turn into an iron homage to Iron Maiden. So we get stuck into it the way we always do with an armature, which in this case is just gonna be a lump of foil underneath the monster clay we're gonna smear on top. Now this is gonna be quite a bit thicker than our dabble, so hopefully this won't have any issues in curing. The most important thing is that I sculpt something really cool. Roughing in a really basic starter shape and then working my way out to the hair, which is where I start the detail, working my way out from the outside towards the center of the face. With all my hair detail mostly in place, it's time to move on to the facial features. Eddie is very zombie-like. He basically looks like a mummy. I don't know the Eddie lore, but let me know in the comments if you're an Iron Maiden fan and if I'm doing Eddie any justice. In all of the artworks of him, he has a lot of lines over his face for these sort of mummified age zombie looking details. So I'm gonna be trying to create a lot of that, but it's gonna be interesting to see how that turns out with the iron look and with a bit of that wear and tear applied. 
especially because there's so many crevices for the rust to sort of stay in. With my Eddy sculpture in a place I'm happy with, it's time to make a silicon mold that we can use for our iron powder. Putting a rough frame around the outside of the border, hot gluing it in and blocking any places that the silicon could leak out and pouring in that satisfying, always beautiful pink silicon. I had almost the perfect amount, but a pro tip is you can actually sort of fill out the mass of a silicon pour with previously made silicon molds, just cut up into little pieces. The amount I mixed barely covered the nose and rather than mixing up a new batch to fully cover it, I pack in and pat in all of these little pieces of diced up previously poured silicon from molds I'm never going to use again to elevate the final level of the pour. Ooh, that's satisfying. All right, let's see if we have an Eddie head. Oh, <laughs> a lot of his hair's come out and gotten stuck in the silicon, so I'll need to pick all of that out, but in theory, this will give me an iron Eddie. Okay, it's time to extract my Iron Maiden Eddie head. I am a bit nervous about this one because there's a lot of detail and I have no idea how this iron powder goes into all of those details. Ah, oh, there's something so satisfying about that sound. <laughs> Moment of truth. Ah. Ooh, Eddie. That is really cool. I've got some uh, silicon sort of torn out by some of the hair details. That worked like astonishingly well. Look at that. Oh my God, I love it. He's so cool just like this. I am extremely curious to see how cool he looks with a bit of us. The rust showed up on this guy really, really well. Maybe it's just all the details and cracks and crevices that are just sort of really picked up on that effect with, I'm not sure, but the combination of adding the rust and then moving across to this polishing, burnishing phase, using the steel wool to sort of scour off some of the surface rust in the outermost areas, and using a spoon to polish some of those outwards facing areas actually makes it half shiny, which really completes the effect. It's a tangent to let you know that you can still get $15 off of my customizer kit for a limited time. The sale will end soon, but we're doing a discount over the Easter period. So you can get yourself or a loved one an amazing pack jammed full of Epic Art supplies that you can customize anything, including all of the awesome stuff that comes in the customizer kit. Over $200 worth of awesome art projects for under $100, including a 40 page book to take you through a whole bunch of activities and patterns that you can make and high quality art supplies that will last you for many years to come. Check it out with the link in the description and use the code JAZZY15 to get $15 off. I'm trying to think of a pun to do with iron. Aren't you glad it's time to get back to making iron stuff? I'm sorry. This was really effective. Like, I love this result. It just looks so cool and it feels really metallic. It's incredibly heavy and like the surface to touch, you could fool anyone with this. This is by far one of the coolest mediums up front I have ever tried, which gets way more effective results than I expected. All right, now that we have a hang of this iron resin stuff, let's take it as far as we can. We've done metal skulls, we've done iron, iron maiden. The obvious next step is iron man. But if I'm gonna do an iron, iron man, I need to make him a little bit more custom. This is the Mark XLII Iron Man, which apparently is 42? Roman numeral for 42. Okay, well there it is. Man, Tony Stark's made a lot of suits. And I reckon he's a pretty good size for this sort of project, but resin always struggles with more mass. And this guy is pretty thick. I mean, this would be a thick pour with resin I'm familiar with, and I'm not familiar with this stuff. So I'm gonna pour sort of half of this, which will end up making him sort of something I could hang on the wall, for example. But before that, I'm gonna pull him apart a little bit and make him a little more my own. 
and we're going to set about customizing our Iron Man by removing the faceplate, which might be a little bit tricky, but you know, with a little bit of fussing and working, I reckon eventually we can get it off and then figure out what to put in the middle. And it so happens that I have a 3D scan of my face, which I slice and 3D printed a few sizes for to see which one would fit best inside the helmet. With a few options to pick from, I chose the larger of the three, which seems like a pretty perfect fit for the proportions of the Iron Man suit. Just took a little bit of sanding back just to make sure it fits in there nice and cozy. Now that the face is in the suit, it's time to pack out a whole bunch of these areas with monster clay. At the end of the day, I don't think this iron resin will flow very nicely into thin armor plates. So I need to thicken them up a bit, fill in any gaps like those around the head and under the shoulder pads, and generally just sort of thicken things up to make sure that there's enough room for the resin to flow into. Now I'm gonna prep my mold by cutting foam card and sort of shaping it around the Iron Man suit so I don't waste too much silicon. And I'm not gonna go straight into doing a silicon mold. I'm actually gonna pour hot liquid monster clay into the base and fill it up to the level at which I want the silicon mold to begin. Before making the silicon mold, I realized that I missed the bottom armor plates of the chest. These plates are way too thin and won't have the resin flow smoothly into them. And I wanna make sure all the plates are smoothly filled. So I had to cut my mold away to fill those out but with those packed in, I can repair my mold and then fill it with silicon. This should now be my silicon mold of an Iron Man suit. It's a lot of suction. Oh, oh, his head's coming off. All right. I got most of him. My precious, precious face. Ah! Okay, I've got it. I've got a mold. Now what's gonna look even cooler if I can do it is having lighting. Ah! Yes! This is the cover to the light in the chest. Just gotta get the light out. I have the bits out that I need. I did my best to protect it and I got a little light. We are in the home stretch. I have a mold, I have a light, and I have my iron and resin. So let's see if we can make me iron Iron Man. Now, I tried a few things to try and figure out what's the best way to preserve the light actually showing through the iron torso without being covered in iron resin. I attempted to mix the iron resin with UV resin to see if I could create a simple seal, even if just a small amount around the outside of the ring. The UV light doesn't actually go through the iron resin because, well, it's not translucent. So I could only cure the very outer surface, creating a little film of cured resin. That wouldn't do. So I'm just gonna have to hope that everything holds in place. So before doing the iron resin pour, I use hot glue to insulate my wiring. And then it's on to mixing a half pour of iron resin and slowly starting off by just working, focusing on the details of the face. Trying to pour it down into all of the crevices and nooks and crannies of the face and the mask. Hopefully working out any air bubbles or areas where the resin would struggle to flow. Then carefully pouring around the light as I hold it down to try and keep that vacuum seal and slowly building momentum through the rest of this half pour. I'm gonna set this aside to cure overnight and come back to do one last pour the next day rather than risking it warping on one really deep pour. So coming back and with that first pour most of the way to cured, I mix up another batch, pour it in there to fill in the rest of the Iron Man and try and encompass the housing of the wiring and the switch to create the final mount for my Iron Iron Man. Did the pour work? Do I have an Iron Man Jazza? Please be cool, please be cool, please be cool, please be cool. Oh, 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 whoa, that's, Cool. This this ha, this is weird. But is it salvageable? Oh, it's just like a weird film on top. The shape is all there. The most important thing was the mask shape. But look at that. It's got like it's got all the details. It just needs a tiny little bit of cleanup. But that looks so cool. And look at that. Okay, this is the second thing. Does the light 
work. We should be able to see the light through it. Yes! Oh, yeah, two out of two, baby. Okay. So now to finish him off, we just need a little bit of cleanup and then a bit of rust to bring my Jazza Iron Man to life. This medium has been way cooler to work with than I expected. Even the dabbles just turned out amazingly. And as you can see, you can sort of get different degrees of rust happening. I think it's safe to say it's the, one of those mediums that makes anything look cooler just by virtue of what it is. So then we went a little more custom and made a custom sculpt. And this cast with the iron powder and with all the rust effects applied looks so cool. Very heavily detailed, which means there's a lot more places for the rust look to sort of gather and build up. So it's quite a harsh aesthetic, but hey, it's metal. So, you know, it's meant to look like that. And last but not least, my Iron Man, which I took a lot more time with and with the rust, was a lot more careful about where I put it, just so that there was more of a balance, like careful to not have too many weird places on the face look rusty, have space in the shiny front surfaces of the armor stand out. And the fact that I got to keep the light and now it's on this housing that I can drill holes in and mount on the wall, makes this like one of the coolest things I've made in a while. Like this is just so fun and surprising how aside from the customization, how easily it comes together and how easily cool it looks. Uh, all that said, the iron powder and the resin, pretty dangerous stuff to work with. So if you're ever gonna try this stuff for yourself, be very, very careful, but the results are incredible. And I hope you've had as much fun watching this process as I have had going through it. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a blast. Make sure to subscribe for more fun with art and creativity and all sorts of unpredictable mediums. And until next time, I'll see you later.